So now we know how to apply the reinforcement learning workflow in the context of robotics, specifically the robots that we are going to program to perform beautiful actions based on what the agent tells it to do in terms of measuring its state and advising on the best action to take. In this video, I'm going to introduce to you the simplest reinforcement learning algorithm out there, which is called the multi-armed bandit algorithm. And it shines or it excels very well whenever you have to optimize your actions in uncertain environment. And by uncertain environment, what I mean is an environment which is very stochastic. Well, it could be very stochastic, moderately stochastic, but the takeaway here is that whenever you have to take optimal actions in an environment whose outcome you are not very certain of, you are not very sure of, then the multi-armed bandit algorithm is going to help you to be able to figure out over time. The thing about reinforcement learning is that because it's a live learning system, you learn the optimal actions over time. So you have to um, repeatedly interact with the environment, measure the state, take an action, get a reward, check if it is a positive or negative reward, and then it reinforces your next action. It advises you on the next action to take. So the multi amp bandit algorithm, trust me, is a very simple algorithm that you will be able to implement and um, um, you will use it to be able to optimize for actions in most uncertain environment. In most textbooks, when they are teaching multi amp bandit, they use um, a casino as an example. So I'm going to follow suit and then use the casino example to explain the algorithm to you and then I'll have another section where I explain the algorithm to you in the context of our robot. And then we write a code. So what the multi armed bandit algorithm helps you to do, as I have summarized up here, is to help you to optimize your actions in uncertain environment. Okay? So let me, let me explain it this way. Let's say you have three doors. Door one, door two, door three. Okay? So these are doors. And I call you and I inform you that you have 100 times to open any of these doors. Okay? So you have 100 times to open any of these doors. And whenever you open any door, the door has a probability of giving you some gift. Let's say the, the, um, opening any door gives you a chance of getting some money. Okay? And the monies that you get from each door could be different and the probability could also be different. For example, let's say there is um, a 10% chance that you get $70 from here. And let's say there is um, a 90% chance that you get 40 cents from here. So the probability is, let's say, 90%. And let's say this is 10%. And let's say over here, there is, um, there is 20% chance of finding $1 anytime you open this door. And you have limited number of times to interact in the environment. How will you take your actions such that you make the most money by the time you exhaust all your hundred trials. What makes it uncertain is you have no idea what these probabilities are. Okay? You don't know the probability of getting 40 cents. Maybe I tell you that when you open door one, 
you can get either 40 cents or nothing. When you open door two, you can get either one dollar or nothing. When you open door three, you can get seventy dollars or nothing. The frequency at which you will get these monies is unknown to you. Because of course, if you knew it, if, if I knew this, common sense tells me that maybe I should go for door two. Because there is a 20% a chance of getting $1. Yes, the one has 90% chance of getting 40 cents. But ask yourself, if I get, let's, let's say any time I open the one, I really get 40 cents. Ask yourself, if you multiply 40 cents 100 times, you are making like, um, is it $4 or $40? Whichever. But... You see that if you go with this one, yes, the guarantee of getting something is big. There is a 90% chance that you find money. But the money is small. So by the time you exhaust your 100 trials, you haven't made as much money. The objective here is for you to make as much money as you can. Okay. You can also say, okay, let me go for the three because yes, the probability is very low. But a very low probability doesn't mean it can't happen. It indeed can happen. And so if you're lucky, you go there the first time you get your $70, you can play with these other guys to find whatever. So if, if you play your cards well, you have 100 trials, but you'll be able to make at least 90 plus 40 cents. So $90, 40 cents before you go. Or... You can make even more by taking the optimal action. Now, your problem here is to figure out the probability because nobody will tell you. We only tell you that this can reward you this much, this can give you this, this can give you this. But the probability is unknown to you. So you have to figure out the probability. And what the multi armed bandit algorithm helps you to do is to figure out these probabilities and let it inform the best action you have to take. So, how do we figure out these probabilities? So, we have door 1, door 2, door 3. Let's represent, let's use these as um, our, our actions. We can open door 1, we can open door 2, we can open door 3. And um, just to help you, in multi armed bandits, we don't really have uh, the correct concept of state. Okay, so the actions here is I can open door one, I can open door two, I can open door three. In other environments, you can sense the state, but in the context of this multi armed bandit, we are talking about just actions and rewards. Okay, so the, the, the workflow diagram you saw can be adjusted depending on the problem that you're working on. So how do we figure out how um, um, often we would be able to get something out of these doors? The simplest approach in reinforcement um, in multi arm bandit algorithm is that we have to store a list of how many times we have opened each of these doors. Okay? How many times we have taken each action. And we also need to store... A list of the total rewards we have gotten from each of these doors. Then we do a simple division to know how often we get a reward from taking a particular action. Okay, so over here, what we are going to do is we will have a list called rewards, and it's going to be a regular Python list. Okay, so one, two, three. So the first index of the rewards list is going to store how much money we have made by opening door one. The rewards is just concerned with how much money we have made by opening door one. The second index is going to store how much money we have made by opening door two. And of course, how much money we have made by opening door three. 
And the next list we need to keep track of is a list of how many times we have actually opened these doors. So the first one is how much we have made by opening. And the second one is how many times have we actually taken those actions. So I'm going to call this action count. Act count. And the action count array is also going to be of the same length as the reward array length. So let's say I have I have made as much as $1.2 by opening door one. And $1.2 because I, I, I might have opened it three times and each one of them gave me 40 cents, so $1.2. This, I may have made um, just a dollar or even nothing. 